Today we're going to discuss RODI system basics, explain why almost every reefer uses reverse osmosis deionized water, and finish with a quick overview of what each stage in an RODI system does. Hi, my name's Ryan and I'm the host of BRS TV, where each week we explore a new topic related to reefing. This week we're going to dive into a piece of equipment that's found on basically every long-term successful reef tank out there, reverse osmosis deionization systems. While this thing looks fairly complex with all the canisters, filters, and tubes, it's probably one of the easiest things you'll ever install or use. There are three hoses, attach one to your faucet, slide the waistline down the drain, and the last one produces ultra-pure water you can use with your reef tank. If you feel like getting more advanced, you can hook the system up permanently under your sink, mount them on your wall, or even set them up with a pressurized tank for purified drinking water as well. All of these things we'll cover in detail within future episodes. When you first decide to start a reef tank, there are a few water options, but most people select tap water with some type of conditioner, reverse osmosis, or deionized water. Well, there's always exceptions to the rule. Every reef tank I've seen that's been successful more than a few years uses RO or RODI. As a new reefer, most of us were just concerned about chlorine, which is really simple to treat with a water conditioner. It's later on you start to learn the benefits of using a high quality source of water. Recently, one of our viewers posted a pretty insightful comment. Reef keeping isn't about maintaining fish or corals, it's about maintaining water. This is the best advice ever. Healthy fish and corals are just a side benefit at being good at maintaining pristine water. First step of maintaining water is starting with a high quality source water. There are two main concerns with well and city water that go beyond simple chlorine. First is it can contain nutrients like phosphate and nitrate which feed algae growth, slow down calcification, and result in coral growth. Fish food will almost always be the biggest source of these nutrients, but maintaining high quality low nutrient water should include a variety of efforts. Second concern is general contaminants like metals and chemicals found in many water sources. Farm runoff, old sewer systems, your home's copper piping, less than ideal water treatment plants, and a hundred other things can all add unwanted contaminants to your home's water. Because your tap water is mostly safe to drink, it might seem safe for your tank, but tap water can contain elements that may not harm people, but will irritate or kill more sensitive invertebrae like corals. However, the more you learn about tap water, the less you may want to drink it as well. What your city or the EPA considers safe levels of disinfection byproducts, copper, lead, arsenic, mercury, and a laundry list of inorganic or organic compounds might not be the same thing you personally want to consume, provide to your kids, or pour into a closed system like a reef tank where the levels constantly rise as water evaporates and you add more of these elements each day. Well, I realize my neighbors aren't dropping like flies from drinking the city water, and many tanks seem to do okay, especially in the short run. Basically, all of these items listed by the EPA as common water contaminants are known to cause serious health-related issues and can't be good for your corals or fish either. Rather than trust the safe levels they've come up with and your city's testing methods, I think it's just easier to buy an inexpensive RO system and remove as many of these things as possible yourself. No matter how you slice it, reducing the sources of these things introduced to your body or aquarium can't be anything but beneficial. Reverse osmosis filtration will remove a vast majority of these things, many of them by as much as 98%. The second step of deionization can approach 100% removal with many common contaminants and ideal for a reef tank. Reverse osmosis water can be bought at most grocery stores, fish stores, or made at home. Grocery stores typically sell it out of a dispensing machine where you can fill your own jugs. This is often convenient and fairly affordable, but you're at the mercy of how well the store takes care of their machine. Fish stores are often much better options because they know the importance of maintaining their systems for reefing. Fish stores also sell reverse osmosis deionized water, which is what most reefers prefer. Some of them even sell it pre-mixed with salt. Buying it at the fish store is sweet because it gives you a solid excuse to go look at new fish and corals. You can also purchase an RODI system for home use. Honestly, I think having ultra-pure water on demand at home for top-off and water changes is a cornerstone to success. Fact is, having to go get water is an added step that makes water changes harder to do. A solid water change schedule is probably the most closely related thing to long-term success and having a five-year-plus reef tank. Time for a quick overview of how a system like this works. 
This is what we call a five-stage RODI system. It has a single sediment filter, two carbon blocks, an RO membrane, and the final stage is a DI resin cartridge. The sediment filter is pretty much as it sounds, a filter designed to capture sediment and dirt so it doesn't clog the more expensive carbon blocks. Well, these filters all do look the same. They come in various qualities. Using higher quality sediment filters will protect your other filters better, reduce the replacement frequency, and help maintain higher water pressures feeding the system, which will have a big impact on overall performance. We recommend NSF certified GE PureTrex and RO.Z as some of the best options around for sediment filters. The next two are carbon blocks. They're typically installed in series with one having a larger micron size, often between 5 and 10, and the second one is often less than 1 micron. These filters are primarily for removing chlorine and volatile organic compounds like pesticides, herbicides, and a hundred other man-made chemicals. They'll also remove unwanted tastes and odors. We suggest looking for a brand that's made in the USA with US water quality standards versus cheap imported versions, and look for the NSF certified seal, which means these filters have been tested to ensure their quality. Our favorite has always been KX Technologies. They're pretty much the default leader in what everyone else in the industry measures up to. Some systems have a single carbon block rather than two. In most cases, a single block is suitable. However, dual blocks have some advantages. First, it provides longer contact time for more complete removal. Second, the smaller micron carbon blocks are typically better at hard to remove volatile organic compounds and running two blocks gives you a longer replacement window so it's less critical to change them exactly on time. The next stage is the RO membrane in the white canister up top. This is the filter that does a vast majority of the work. The rest of the filters are more or less just prepping the water for the membrane. A good functioning membrane will typically remove between 96 and 98 percent of the total dissolved solids or TDS found in the water. Basically a thin membrane rolled up which allows water molecules to pass through but rejects most contaminants and sends them out with the wastewater. If you maintain the pre-filters properly, this membrane can last as long as three years or even longer. Dow is a worldwide leader in RO membrane technology and really the undisputed king. In fact, a good portion of other brands are just Dow material rolled at another plant. The Dow 75 gallon per day membrane provides excellent performance at water pressures typical in most homes and what we recommend in almost all cases. There are 150 gallon per day membranes, but they require higher water pressures so you may need a booster pump. After the water leaves the RO membrane, it's relatively pure, and this is the type of water most people would drink. Most people don't drink deionized water because it's expensive, unneeded, and arguably it's not healthy to drink water this pure. However, for reefing needs, we like to take it one step further with a final polish through deionization resin. This is because nutrients like phosphate and nitrate are some of the harder elements for an RO membrane to remove. So while the water has been substantially purified by the RO system, there may be disproportionately high levels of these nutrients which the DI resin will help further reduce. DI resin is basically a bunch of negatively and positively charged beads which have an affinity for many contaminants. Once the water passes through the cartridge, it should come out as zero TDS water and ready for the tank. In our industry, it's fairly common to use a resin that contains a pH-sensitive dye, which changes color to tell you when the resin is depleted. One of the more common resins changes from a dark blue to a golden brown as it depletes. The reason we don't use DI resin alone is because it only removes contaminants with an electrical charge, and in most cases it would be cost prohibitive. It's much more cost effective to remove a vast majority of the contaminants with an RO system, then use DI resin for the final polish. If you have any questions or comments on this video, leave them in the comments area down below. As always, I look forward to interacting with you. If this is your first time with us, thanks for watching and be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. See you all next week with another episode of BRS TV.